I did not put in the data validation. So I am going to get rid of that first. Let's be sure we go by steps. And uh, we're going to put the dates in here. I was in the wrong column, so I'm going to say 4, 11, 2016. Hit enter. And this should be the right area. Let's make sure the dates change as necessary. I pull down on the fill handle. OK. Now I'm going to go sell. Select cell D9 through D13. Then go to the data tab, the data, data, data tab. Select data validation. Click on data validation. And then in settings, I'm going to look for a decimal. It's going to be between the minimum is 0 and the max is 12. We don't want anything over 12. OK, and then I'm going to go to the error alert. We're going to call this error invalid entry. And then for the error message, we're going to put in total hours worked cannot exceed 12 hours. And we're going to say OK. OK, so just to check on this, for the directions, I'm going to put in what? It should be like 16 here. I should get a rejection. OK, well, that's good. I'm going to put in 10 this time. It should take that. And then uh, I am. Put in 8, 12, 8, 9. So I'm going to put in 8, 12, 8, and 9. All right. That looks a little bit better. So that was uh, step 6. So we're going to go into step 7. I am going to use the if function this time. I want to go into F9. And we're going to check to see if uh, hours worked was uh, less than or equal to the total hours worked. So I am going to say equals if, open prints, if total hours worked, if this column was less than or equal to 8, comma, if this is true, then the answer would be 8 times, uh, excuse me, uh, D9 times E4. So it'll be, if that's true, it's D9 times E4, which is the regular rate, comma. If it's false, then we have to add in the overtime. OK, so the overtime would be, let's see, the overtime would be 8 times E4, because 8 is the regular. If you have overtime, you must have 8 or as a regular time. So it's 8 times E4. Then we're going to add the overtime, which is, OK, so overtime would be uh, E9 times E5. So it would be E9 times E5. Let's make sure this looks good. OK, so now the only other thing we have to check for here is what needs to be absolute and what stays relative. So because if it's abs since we're going to copy the formula down, but if we don't want where it's looking at to change, we have to put what? We have to put dollar signs in front of it. So the ones we need to keep steady are what? E4 and E5. So I'm going to look in here. I see one E4. 
fill in front of it. I'm going to click on F4 just to be on the safe side. I'm going to go in front of E5. I'm going to push F4. Let's make sure. And here's another E4. So we're going to push F4 here again. So to put the dollar signs in front of what we should keep from changing. So if that looks OK, then I'm going to close it since it's a formula and hit Enter. OK, and then I'm going to copy this formula down. Okay, so we'll take a quick check. 8 times 750 is what? 56 plus 4 is 60. So the second and the fourth one looks good. And if we have one over, then it's 60 plus what? 1125, which is 7125. So it looks like all of this looks good. Okay. Now we're going to go into the macros, which auto automatically calculates things for you. So I'm going to display the payment worksheet. This is eight. We're going to display the payment log worksheet. We'll click on A1. We'll click on the developer tab. We're going to record macro. Give it the name of copy time card. Shortcut key is T. I'm going to say OK. We started the macro. Now we're going to display the time card worksheet. We're going to highlight A20 through F20. Copy it. Then we're going to display the payment work log. We're going to click on relative references, use relative relative references, hold the end key down, hit the down arrow twice. Use relative references again. And on the Home tab, we're going to click the Paste down arrow and click on Values. And the Ted Hoyt transfers down. OK. So we're going to click. Um, cell A1, we reset it for the next one, display the time card worksheet, press escape, and then click on cell B3, and we're going to type in, uh, I'm going to click on the developer tab. I'll get ahead of myself. Then say stop recording. Okay, that was step nine. For step 10, we're going to test the macro now. We're going to put in Brett Martin here. Then type in. Eight, ten, eight, eight, nine. Then we're going to click on B3. And then we're going to start our macro by hitting our shortcut, Control T. I'm going to display the payment log. And Brett Martin's on there too. So this is working. OK, now on the Developer tab, which we're on, we're going to click on Macros, select the uh, Copy Time Card Macro, which we have. 
and click edit. Now we're going to copy and paste the macro code to a blank worksheet and name the worksheet macro. Okay, so we're going to, let's see how long this is. It's a little bigger. I'm going to copy this. Then we're going to attach a blank worksheet. Paste it. We're going to call it macro. It's to the right of the payment log tab. That's what we want to do. We're going to save the workbook. And we want to save it as a uh, macro free workbook. We're going to click on yes. Okay, make sure the worksheets are properly named in the following order employee data, time card, payment log, and macro. And now you can submit this.